Perhaps then I could challenge you on your branding that you just mentioned. So on the branding that you just mentioned, you said maybe it's because we're, we're branded as micronutrients. I, I don't know whether others would share this, but I, I still think there's a perception out there that micronutrient forum is still the combination of IVAC and INAG and perhaps Ising, and that it's not even all micronutrients, it's still you know, iron, zinc and vitamin A. And I wonder how one could try to move that forward. And I, and I think in truth, you know, if you, if you, I haven't done this, but I think if you went through the, the program, you would find that they still overwhelmed the agenda. Is that fair comment or not? I think that's fair. We really did make effort to bring in other micronutrients, but we haven't been exhaustive by any stretch of the imagination. I think it's still fair to, to say that. Yeah, I was going to reflect a bit on Andrew's plea for making sure the discovery is at the table. I, I, I didn't obey the tracks. <laughs> I flitted from one to the other, and so, which I enjoyed very much. Uh, but what I, I think how I want to frame it is to make sure that we're. It, sometimes we we want to, as I said, we we want the perfect memos before policy, and then the policy is the end of the discussion. And I think we need more comfortable about doing things in parallel. That there will be a continued stream of discovery. We're constantly challenging that stream of discovery to inform policy, program guidance, but with an open mind that, well, that will change. We're going to do the best we can do with what we know today, but continue to drive the basic science as it will continue to inform and things will change. So it's pursuing a parallel and saying, you know, that's fine. We, you know, we have to be a learning organization on several fronts at once, and it's not, we can't afford to be just serial, have the perfect answer before we go into implementation, but we can also have implementation and suddenly stop the, the discovery. I think there are people. Yeah, well, Andrew, I, you know that I always agree with you. Um, and this issue of discovery science has been very dear to my heart, because it used to be there in the early meetings. And then what happened, unfortunately, is as the movement towards programs happened, there, the, the basic scientists, more basic scientists, didn't come to the meetings. And I feel like the best we've been able to do so far is to um, put the efficacy track in there, which sort of substitutes for, in a way for discovery science, but not really at all. But I'm very confused and we need to discuss more. If we're going to increase our branding to have three and a half thousand people at this meeting, we're going to open our aperture to do science, in the way that um, nutrition scientists do it. Um, how are we going to fit this all in? We're already struggling with everything there is to do. And it's almost like the whole area has grown so much that we need to really think hard about how to restructure it. Because I absolutely agree that we're missing more of the um, discovery science that is needed here now. Thanks. So please introduce yourself, and uh, if there is a question, um, suggestion, you might like to answer that question. Hi, I'm Tiffany Duque. Um, I appreciated your comments, Lena, and just had a couple observations or thoughts on what you mentioned about the Latin American community. I've been working in Colombia for almost two years now, and um, I thought it was very interesting what you brought up, and I was happy to see a couple of Colombians here, but really when I mentioned it to people, people weren't familiar with it or hadn't heard of it, and I think one thing is what you mentioned that micronutrient can be very specific to people, and even people who are working in some ways with micronutrients maybe think that they wouldn't be interested in what's going on here, even though I personally think that it does capture a little bit broader, and maybe that it is something to think about. The other thing is I think it's very expensive um, for someone to come from some of these countries. I don't know how it compares to like SSLAN and ISU and things, but I think cost is, is a real issue for people coming from academia or small NGOs, people who are doing 
big projects in developing countries but don't make that list of low-income countries or any sort of substation. So it, it, it's expensive to, to travel and fly in hotels and $650 registrations. <laughs> Um, and then the other thing I wanted to comment on, even though I missed the 35-year cutoff by a couple of years, is the, is the young person topic. Um, I think, and then another panelist mentioned the IBAC and IMAC, and I think that speaks to the, the years gone, and younger people wouldn't even know what you're talking about specifically when people use those kinds of acronyms. So <laughs> I, I just feel like I came in on the end of those, so I do know what you mean, but I think a lot of younger people would not know what those things mean. And so I think when we're thinking about rebranding and how can we capture those young people and, and what's exciting for them, I think one thing is the discovery science, and one thing is thinking about the scope, one thing is thinking about the cost, but then also how do we get those people here with, with the ideas and the innovation and the, the excitement and the enthusiasm. So anyway, just a few observations. Thanks. Kathy Swan from Helen Keller International. And I come at this from the lens of a manager, not a nutritionist. So two thoughts, building on what was just said, what panelists have said about broadening the lens. I come to this not from the world of nutrition, and I've always wondered, honestly, why is it the micronutrient form instead of the nutrition form? We're talking about nutrition. And I have colleagues at other hunger and nutrition organizations in New York who said that meeting's not for me, it's all about micronutrients. So just to the branding point. I also wanted to build on what Sean said about the sense of outrage. And one of the sessions, I have to say one of the very few I thought was way too short, was probably on Monday that it was an MI-sponsored session, and there was a guy who spoke for five minutes, at most I think, from Brookings, who talked about how nutrition gets 1% of all ODA, and then he shows how valuable nutrition is, how it's essential to development, everything we all know, and he said, clearly you guys are not doing a good job in terms of advocacy and getting the word out there. So you had the elevator pitch, which I didn't go to, but I heard from a lot of colleagues that it was really exciting. Why don't we next time do one that is the elevator pitch for how do we solve our PR problem? How do we sell nutrition? Why are we only getting 1% of ODA given what we all know nutrition does? So I would say that would be a good brainstorming session for another time. Thanks. Uh, uh, my name is Mola Amrita. I work for uh, UC Davis and ICDDRB. Uh, um, I would like to thank uh, Andrew for bringing up the um, you know, issue of basic science and also particularly inflammation and how it is linked to nutrition. We know that there is a proximal determinant in the UNICEF framework which is called disease, but we are not doing anything about disease or inflammation as a nutrition community. And, uh, uh, but we need to do a lot of uh, things around that area because this is uh, very important not only to uh, uh, understand why the interventions are working and also to understand why the interventions are not working. Um, anyway, um, I have questions to uh, Sean because you uh, pointed out that we need to learn from other, other sectors like HIV program or other, even corporate sectors as well. So, but, what are the things we can bring in, uh, I mean, in the nutrition community to move faster, as Lindsay pointed out? Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Bibi Kiyose. If you can allow me to be politically incorrect, I shall do so with your permission. Thanks. Picking on the next uh, issue on where are the people from Mexico, Quintana Roo? You see, my problem is the people that are most researched, studied, are not even in the room. We present beautiful scientific evidence, but they don't even get to know what they are suffering. How are we communicating? Are we incestuously limited by our own approaches? our own strategies, to not even take the knowledge back to them and let them know what they can do different and better. That's one part. Where are the policy makers in this room? Are they even here? How do we communicate back to them what has come out of here 
and what they should be doing and the investments that and the investment that they should be making towards their own programs. And also, I mean, is it about a, an ethical or a moral issue that we were able to address in terms of going back to the roots and working with indigenous knowledge systems and understanding where they're coming from, what they really need, and then building the right capacities at the right time for the right purpose. So my question to the for all, maybe, maybe one or two. Sean, you can take this one. <laughs> I have to give them. Sean, how do you think that investment should be shaped at local level, regional level, and from the invest, from the donor perspective, so that there is some element of sustainability built into the policy making and program design and program implementation and impact? Hi there, I'm Phil from Medical Research Council, The Gambler. And um, mine is a comment really. Um, many of us here are introverts. And what I'd like to ask is how do you get the voices of introverts heard? Um, even coming to speak here with a microphone and cameras is very intimidating. But we have good ideas as well. <laughs> and just, I guess, what I was thinking about was your comment on how to get younger people more involved, and maybe there are some ideas as to how you can uh, let other people's voices get heard. And just as an, as an example, the Cycling Life Elevator Pitch contest was absolutely fantastic for me. It allowed my voice to be heard, and I was so motivated by the feedback I got. Uh, so there might be some ideas you can have in um, a Planning plan conference. I can give you some suggestions with them. Uh, thank you. Some responses, we could do another round. Hello, and uh, before uh, presenting myself, I ask you not to kick me out because I'm not this person. This person is my dad, and uh, <laughs> I, I'm just invited. I, I come from, from Mexico City, and I'm here for, like an accident, but I really work in uh, Amnesty International in Mexico. Uh, I didn't believe that this forum is going to be interesting for me, but after coming. Sneaking in into these conversations, <laughs> I, I believe this was uh, very interesting. Uh, I'm not a scientist, but I'm really surprised that uh, I didn't hear before uh, the forum before. And my my question is, why are, are uh, my people from Amnesty International or other NGOs involved here in addressing uh, nutrition as a uh, human right? And why are not you uh, at my workshops in Amnesty International addressing the same problems? And uh, I think that there's a, an, a structural problem uh, here uh, that, that I can see, and that is uh, we have a discrimination uh, between the scientific community and the rest of us. Uh, the, the, the social sciences people and researchers and I believe that uh, I, I, well I will encourage you to to break down all the, those walls between the scientific community and the rest of the community because it's not so hard to understand first of all uh, maybe I will make mistakes in, in the technical and more scientific uh, aspects of it but we all share the same problems and if you go out of this very forum you will see kids in the streets with nutritional problems, and, and I believe that uh, the, the first step for us as uh, like a privileged uh, sector of, of societies is to bring down that uh, division between the people that know how to do it and the rest of the world, because uh, that, that's part of policy making. That will be my goal. Thank you very much. Thank you. So um, I will turn it over to the panelists. I just want to make one reaction to your comment, uh, Kathy, related to nutrition. I have to say that when we when we got the steering committee back together in 
well, 2011 is when we first started talking to each other. We had a long discussion about that. Are we, is the, is the focus on micronutrients still the right focus? And we debated and discussed and we decided that it was because there are other broader nutrition meetings that bring on that broader agenda. But that doesn't mean that we equate micronutrients with supplementation. And I guess that's where, or, or any other one individual intervention or anything. And I think that's where we still, you know, help us, help us figure out how to move that and help us understand how to, how to keep some focus so that we're unique from other, like, from other nutrition meetings. Our, our, our end game is still about micronutrients. But we don't lose the fact, and we don't, and we're better able to communicate that that still means micronutrients as it relates to nutrition, as it relates to diets, and, and so on. Um, but there's a bit of a tension there in, in how far we we change the language, how far we fully open it up. Will we just become another nutrition meeting? We want to be unique, and so we can we can talk about that some more. All right. So other comments and. Jane reminded that two of the questions were addressed to me, so um, <laughs> the easiest ones, right? So the first question was what to learn from other, uh, other sectors that have moved faster. Uh, I was reflecting specifically on, I think, what are some things that are relevant from HIV or not relevant. Um, with HIV, it was interesting, you know, elites were affected as well as poor people. That's unfortunately in a way, not as much the case for our problem. It was perceived by decision makers as a clear and present danger. That created action. Um, and there were, there were very clear asks. So that, that, that's hugely important. I think we're getting better there, but we need to move. And I will come back to, I think, the the second one about clear and present danger. And if I've really sensed a tipping point in the enabling environment in the last year, it's much less about nutrition's contribution to survival or micronutrients contribution to survival. It's that almost all decision makers are aspiring to have their economies emerge and thrive. And when they think, well, look, that's not gonna happen if I'm shackled with 40% of my population is stunted or still dragging the ball and chain of iodine deficiency, that positions it as a clear and present danger. And so I think this is where, again, and I appreciate very much Amnesty International infiltrating this because that's the, exactly the sort of broad tent I think we need. Um, BB, thanks for the easy question. And, you know, I think we were reflecting on this a bit earlier this morning and then there was a symposium on Nigeria um, and I think it's, the, the challenge is from a donor side, I would say, which is a role I'm relatively new to, is that what can you do to inspire that national leadership? Because at the end of the day, that national leadership has to be there, I think, for anybody else to really rally around. And nothing from the outside can substitute for that. And so I think it's, and we were just talking about the case in Mexico of the Institute of National Institute of Public Health and how it's just been such a beacon of creating a culture of evidence-based decision-making. You know, that, once you have that sort of national leadership, I think people can rally around it. But it can't be created in a vacuum. And so I think that's the tension uh, and, and finding that, that leadership both in individuals and institutional that really you can uh, rally around is important. I think those were the ones to me. Other comments? Who wants to go? As a communications person, I really also want to say, I think we've also been fairly harsh on ourselves um, as the forum. If we really believe we will ever get policy makers to this forum, in no matter really what format we reshape it, I think we're setting ourselves an absolutely unachievable goal. I think what we have to look at is who do we use, and I've heard the terms used over the days of brokers, or who can be the people that do the linkages for us? 
There's even many forums that uh, policymakers you would expect to go to don't get, go to. So I think we need to add to the discussion something about where are the linkages that we make from what we discuss at the forum back to the policy makers in the language again that they understand. The expectation that they will ever come to the micronutrient forum rebranded, unbranded, disbanded is I think actually very unreal and we're being too hard on ourselves. That, that's a great point. I'm just going to take the microphone for a second. Um, and I think that we, uh, Lindsay also brought that up. I think it's also unrealistic to think that, that scientists, trained scientists, are the right people to, to translate and communicate fully to policymakers. And, we are, and we're holding the bar too high on scientists and we're being too critical on scientists. There is, it is a different skill set. And science programs, nutrition programs, I can vouch for since I'm what I study, don't teach you translation if your focus is on the rigor and the, and the quality of the research. It is a different skill set. And when we somehow need to create and train that pattern of workers that through the week people have been calling knowledge brokers or translators, I think you said, um, Lindsay. So, one? No, yeah, so I, I couldn't agree more. And to bring that to challenges I see as a, as a programmer, as a person who's trying to design evidence base into programs on the ground. You know, I'm intrigued by all the results that come here, but sometimes they're enormously specific, right? And you're saying to yourself, okay, now we know about the absorption in, a, in the case of a small community in Turkana. So how do I extrapolate to put it into my program that, you know, maybe it's not in Kenya, but it's now in Rwanda. You know, can, how much can we stretch and how much can we keep going while we continue to discover? And, and, I, and I have to say, I, I'm, I, I'm not clear from this community how much leeway we have to do that. That's the evidence you're generating. It's enormously important. I need to know how to use it in programming when the evidence is quite specific. So that's my one point. My second one is going back to the youth. I think this is, it was clearly refreshing. Um, I think we all see a need. Um, and so I just have a quick question. I think we, I think we, or do we understand how the youth learn, how quickly, um, how, where they're getting resources, how fast they're moving in this area. Um, I would imagine the forum might benefit from a virtual space where it's pre-meeting or concurrent with the meeting. It also handles some of the expense questions. Um, is there a way we can sort of um, convene a much more a virtual space in parallel to this meeting to expand um, and, and, and open the aperture? Yeah, precisely because what Jane said, you said about, um, I mean, it, it is true that it's very difficult to ask uh, someone who's studying in a field as a scientist as, and you have your, your language and you have your, your, your ways, it's very difficult to then ask that person to translate that and go and meet the policymaker and then convince them. It's not that realistic. And, However, it is important to have that bridge and it is important that that communication um, it, it is there and sometimes according to the, the way the forum um, thinks about success, you can, have, you can, you can get to that, you can, you, you can are you successful because of that or not. So imagine that we, that you say, well, we think that this forum is, is a successful one because of so many people coming here. That's a way of putting it. Another way of putting it, a, comp a complementary one, is, well, a forum will be a success if we are able, through various channels, in the next year, <laughs> to reach a different, uh, 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 various policy makers. And these policymakers made a change in their countries because of our 
our knowledge in the form. That, if that is your, in, your indicator of success, then, <laughs> then you need to change your form and include as part of the forum, not in the in, in these rooms for the three days, but over the over the the year, another people type of people, the brokers, that those are the ones going to channel this very fruitful information to other people. So it, it, it depends on what do you mean by success in the forum. How do you measure that? Okay. So I'm going to give you back the question. Before we add that thought, since you're the director of evaluation of social programs, how do you, as Coneval, yeah. do you try to measure? Do you have indicators? Do you have a measurement framework to measure the success of the of the research that's done? Yeah, well, that's a very good question because what we do is we evaluate social policy, and in order to do that, we hire scientists, very scientists, including, of course, our friend from INSP. And then we have the findings, the findings there. But our main indicator for us is not the number of evaluations done and finished. Our main indicator is the number of improvements made in public policies, but specifically in social policy, due to our evaluations process and findings. And therefore, what we have to do during the year, during the year, is we need to track all those changes in programs, in strategies, in the federal government, in the state government, and therefore every year we have, I can give you right now, the number of changes done due to our evaluation process. And when we do that, then our, our, main, our main goal is not only to produce the knowledge, but we need to have brokers <laughs> to convince these guys to use it. Because if we don't have it, our indicator is will be always always in zero. We should have had you in some of our monitoring evaluation sessions. And I know there's more questions, but I do um, want to check in with uh, Juan Rivera to know what our timing is in terms of the arrival of the secretary. Um, we want to go straight flow through into the next session. Just a quick check on time.